Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today I want to talk about self-defense keychains. And there's lots of people out there trying to sell these things. Uh, they're on TikTok doing videos to try to promote this. Typically they're aiming their marketing at women, trying to promote messages of empowerment, or you got to be able to protect yourself, which are great goals. The problem is that the people selling these things are basically grifters and this is snake oil self-defense. You should not buy this stuff. It is crap. At best, it is garbage. And at worst, it puts you at actual risk. So let's dive in. I guess the first thing to talk about is the fundamental assumptions that go into this because they want to start off and say, listen, you know, there's violence against women in society. There's all sorts of horrible crimes that are perpetrated. And so you need this stuff to protect yourself. And the assumption is really that the danger is from somebody like this guy. And maybe with some creepy music, maybe some sound effects. There we go. This guy is creepy, right? This guy is the danger. And that's not actually the case. The guy who is most likely to offend against women is somebody like this guy. I don't mean this guy specifically, like this particular individual human being. I mean that women are most at risk typically from boyfriends and husbands and acquaintances, people you're out on a date with, people you know and are likely already becoming vulnerable with. That's where the risk is. More women are assaulted by partners, or, and that includes sexually assaulted by partners. That is where the risk really is, primarily. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't say, hey, I want to protect myself against the creepy guy as well. But when you're doing a risk assessment, it should start from the assumption of stopping the risks that are the biggest risks, right? And that is really the biggest risk issue here. So you might be wondering, what is a self-defense keychain? What does that have on it? And how can you talk about them generally if there's so many different sellers? Aren't they selling all different products? Well, as it turns out, they're all kind of samey. So things you'll often find, and they'll sell you sort of a package of three to 12 items all on a keychain. But uh, things you'll commonly see are a knockoff Kubotan. So when I say knockoff, because Kubotan is a brand name and these aren't the branded version, Sometimes these will be described as a window breaker because they don't want to describe it as a weapon. Uh, they'll also have things like little keys with a tiny little knife on them that folds out. Uh, personal alarms where you pull a thing and it makes an alarm noise and that's supposed to help. Uh, these things often have a pom-pom on them because when trouble starts, you really want to have a pom-pom. As well as seatbelt cutter slash window break uh, things, uh, bottle openers, all sorts of random little odds and sods. They also often include a thing of pepper spray and slash or a stun gun. They'll often describe this as a taser, but it's properly a stun gun because again, taser is a brand name and taser wants nothing to do with this crap. So you might be wondering, why do they all have the same stuff? Well, that's because they're all getting it from the same place. Notwithstanding the fact that these people were are typically saying, oh, support a small business or buy local or I got to get another resupply from my manufacturer as if, you know, they're somehow involved in the design of this stuff. They're all getting it in the same place. And that is Alibaba.com. So you can see here, custom self-defense keychain, chili spray keychain. It keeps going on. That's sort of how they go. And so you see, this is sort of the stuff that they'll put on these things. Now they can add stuff from different, uh, you know, different packages, but basically what they're doing is they're ordering packages of this stuff, uh, making videos and, you know, otherwise advertising that you should buy this and then shipping it on. And the only thing they're really adding to the whole package is to the price because they're typically selling these things for 40 or $50. And the price listed on AliExpress is 50 cents to $3.99 a piece. And they say 10 piece minimum order here, but uh, they'll often say one piece minimum order if you want to buy a sample. So if you just want one, you could probably just buy a sample off any of these people and you'd be good. So yeah, when I say grifters, it's because really they're not adding anything to this other than charging you 10 times the price. Hmm. Next, let's talk about the products themselves, because the first problem is the whole concept of the product. You're not Batman. You don't need a utility belt with a half dozen crappy solutions to a problem. 
If you're in an area where it's legal to carry something for self-defense, then what you need is one or two good solutions, things that you can practice with and that you know will work reliably and that you can produce reliably in a hurry under stress. And a keychain really doesn't fit that bill because what are you going to do with a keychain? You're going to stuff it in your pocket. You're going to stuff it in a purse. And these things are covered with jangly dangly bits. Uh, they've got rhinestones. They've got sharp points. They're going to have all sorts of things that can snare and snag. And so you're not going to be able necessarily to reliably get this out in a hurry if you have to. And a keychain where everything is attached to each other is a really bad idea for this. Because let's say you do pull it out and then you got to sort through it and find the thing you want to use. Because it's sure going to be a lot more effective hitting somebody with a Kubaton than it will if you decide to hit them with a hand sanitizer. So you got to figure out what's in your hand and, you know, how to orient it. That is not great. If you're thinking, hey, it's good that I've got all of these things because then I've got a backup weapon. If somebody takes it away, well, no, you attached all of them together. So if somebody takes away the first thing, you don't have a backup. They have the backup and they have your house keys and your car keys. So you're not going anywhere. That is not ideal to me here. Uh, there's plenty of situations where you might want to have your house keys in one hand and your, you know, self-defense item in the other. Say you're trying to get into your house and you still want to have that item in your hand. Not great. Let's say you're driving and you turn the car on, you know, if you still have a keyed ignition. Well, now all of your self-defense options are attached to the car, which is, again, not great if you need them in any fashion there. So this is really not a good solution. I really don't like the idea of, you know, a keychain collection. And all of these things are also not very good quality. And I'm going to go through each of them sort of looking at the stuff that people put on these things. The other thing I'll note here is I specified if you're in an area where this is legal and there's lots of places, Canada included, where they're not. And in Canada, a lot of the stuff that they include on these things, including the stun guns and the pepper spray and a lot of these sort of disguised knives would count as prohibited weapons. And many of the people selling these things are perfectly comfortable shipping them to Canada. I also saw that there was somebody who has one that where they say this is UK legal. And the first thing on it that you can see is a Kubaton. Well, People in the UK have been successfully prosecuted for carrying Kubatons. So when they say it's a UK legal item, it really, you know, I'm not a UK lawyer, but from the little bit I can find out, I would say not so much. So don't trust these people with your, you know, with your safety, because one real problem here is that carrying this stuff around might put you at risk of legal prosecution. And they're much more inclined to make the sale than they are to say, hey, you know what, maybe, maybe not. It's not a great idea to use illegal means to defend yourself because, you know, people say, oh, well, I'd rather do that. But there's plenty of legal things you can carry around that if you had to, you could defend yourself with, but which are not inherently illegal to have. And yeah. Um, going to jail is a is a self-defense failure. You know, as much as you might be scared of the creepy guy, you should also be worried about this guy here because he can do bad things to you if you're breaking the law. So, yeah. Okay, let's talk about the uh, specific items now and sort of why I'm not thrilled with the, the various things they put on these keychains. Next, let's talk about the Kubatan, which might be marketed as a window breaker in some of these packages if they're trying to avoid weapons kind of languages. Now, if you're in a place like Canada, where they limit the carrying of weapons, you're not going to fool any police officer. They know what this is about. So here, it's illegal to carry a weapon for the purposes of self-defense, so you could very well be charged. It's also illegal to carry a weapon concealed, regardless of whether it would otherwise be lawful to carry it. So the instant you stick this thing into a pocket or a purse, you'd be committing a crime. It's legal to own, and they'll often tell you, hey, it's legal to own these here in Canada, or legal to own these in whatever other place. But it may not be legal to actually carry it around and use it for the purpose they're selling it to you for. 
If you're not in a place that limits the carrying of weapons, then you probably have access to better weapons, because although this is something you can sort of carry around and stick into a pocket, it's not a great self-defense option. It really relies on pain compliance, and pain compliance is notoriously unreliable. Uh, somebody who's attacking you might be on drugs or in an altered mental state, or just really determined and not going to give in just because it hurts. These things also assume that you've got a fairly substantial body of experience and training, because the most effective way to use them is targeting pressure points. If you haven't had martial arts training where you know what pressure points there are out there and know how to use one of these things to assist in manipulating somebody or forcing their grip open or otherwise ensuring that this thing is effective, it's probably not the most effective thing you could carry. In terms of what it is, it's basically just sort of a hard cylinder. And so there's all sorts of other options you could carry around that essentially could be used for the same thing, although maybe not as well. A pen is a leading contender here, and a pen is less likely to get you arrested. These are not a great tool, but they're not terrible. I mean, they will actually, they can actually be used, but if I was going to be wanting to carry a Kubotan around, and if it were legal for me to do so here in Canada, I'd want to buy one from somebody reputable. Uh, I don't know what uh, quality standards there are in these things. I don't know if it's going to disintegrate in my hands. I'd want to buy from somebody, you know, an established name brand and not just because mm -hmm, mm, brand is not my favorite brand. Let's talk about stun guns because lots of these packages include a stun gun. They may incorrectly describe it as a taser, but a taser is a very different kind of weapon, a more effective kind. None of these packages that I saw included a real taser. Uh, it's all stun guns which work on pain compliance by an electric shock. So I'm going to link here to a video. It's Annette Evans. She did some testing on them and she goes through, she actually does live tests with them and concludes that they're not very effective. From my own experience as a criminal defense lawyer, I can say I've seen lots of files where stun guns were used and not a single one where somebody reported being disabled by it. They'll indicate that it hurts, but not that it stopped them from fighting or prevented them from doing things or, you know, knocked them out or anything like that. I don't think that these things are going to stop a fight. I think at best they're just going to piss someone off. If you put me in a dangerous situation and handed me a stun gun and said use this for self-defense, I'd probably use it the same way I'd use a rock or any other blunt object, just as a striking tool. These are basically garbage and you shouldn't buy them. Um, this is not something that I consider part of a self-defense solution, even if they're legal in your area. Kitty knuckles, or if you're looking at the male version, sometimes they'll sell little pit bull knuckles instead. The idea is really the same. They're made of epoxy or plastic or often metal, which is really important if you're here in Canada because the metal ones are actually a banned weapon entirely. You can't legally own them. The other ones you just can't legally carry or carry concealed. So these are basically just, you know, things you fit over your hand like brass knuckles with spikes. And of course, nobody's going to be fooled, you know, with, oh, it's just a little kitty keychain. Yeah, the police know what these are. I'm, I'm sorry, everybody knows what these are. And in terms of their usefulness as a weapon, they're often not that great. You got to consider that this is something where you have to get in real close and you're not going to do as much damage as you hope to with those things, most likely. Because they're also not really designed very well, you also need to consider that there is a strong likelihood of fluid exchange. You're likely to sustain cuts across your own knuckles using these things, and if you cut them in the process, well, their blood getting into your blood. Is that part of how you envision one of these conflicts going? Because that to me is something that I'd want to avoid. So if you're in an area where it's legal to carry a weapon, there's better choices. And if you're not in an area where it's legal to carry a weapon, these also send you to jail. Do I talk about the pom-pom? Yeah, let's talk about the pom-pom. So the reason why I mention this is that sometimes they'll try to spin this as part of the whole self-defense package. And they'll say the purpose is that it makes it easier to find in your purse. Well, that really just illustrates the whole finding it in your purse problem, right? I mean, you shouldn't need something to make it easier to find. It should just be easy to find. This is why real self-defense options come with a holster or a belt clip 
or something like that to make it readily accessible. You shouldn't have to be digging for your stuff. But they're also not being honest with you, because the real reason these things come with a pom-pom is that they come with a pom-pom when they're shipped from Alibaba. That's just part of the packages they sell. So, yeah, that's all that's going on there. This is not anything useful. This is just a piece of crap that they attach to it. Lots of these things also include a personal alarm. So a little thing where you pull a tab and then it starts making noise. And if you've ever ignored a car alarm, and I know you have, then you know how effective this is likely to be, which is not very. These are also not terribly loud. Uh, let's look at a little clip here. Are my alarms actually loud or am I just lying about that? So I want you to be the judge of that. These alarms are super, super loud. Take a listen. What do you think? Comment I think she's lying about that because she's in an enclosed space. She's not showing any signs of discomfort. She's able to hold this right up to her face. And again, it doesn't seem to be bothering her. So yeah, I don't think this is super loud, to be honest. And I think that this is just another false promise of security, something that is sold to convince people that it's going to make them safe without actually making them any safer. And that is greasy. Let's talk about the pepper spray, because this is the first thing that's actually a decent idea in principle. If it were legal where I am to carry pepper spray that's designed for use on people, I probably would. However, it's not. But, I mean, pepper spray is a recognized defensive option. It works. So you want to get something, you know, if that's what you're looking at, that you know is going to function well, which means not some Alibaba knockoff piece of trash. They'll say, oh, this is extra spicy or real powerful, but they don't actually tell you the percentage of capsaicinoids that's in it. They won't actually give you the numbers because they don't know. And quite frankly, bet your life, because I wouldn't. Let's have a look at a little clip here. So you can see it's being tested and that's coming out real clear, whereas most pepper sprays are coming out more of an orangey color because of the capsaicin ingredients. So I don't know how strong this stuff is, but I certainly have my doubts. I mean, when you're talking about something that's sold in a package of other bits of crap, you don't really leap to the conclusion that this is going to be the thing that is totally excellent. In fact, I kind of leap to the opposite conclusion. So if you're thinking of pepper spray, don't buy this crap. Buy something that is a recognized brand. Sabre makes good products. Uh, you know they're going to work, and I mean not just in terms of the percentages, in terms of, you know, how spicy they're going to be, but also in terms of the mechanical elements. You know, you know that you that when you press the spray button, it's going to spray because they put work into that. Uh, you know that the safety features on it aren't going to fail randomly and have this thing go off on you at some time that you don't want it to. So these are really important things and don't trust your safety to some piece of trash that comes from who knows where. Eh, brand is the worst brand of product for self-defense items. So why make this video? Well, because this pisses me off. You've got people who are relying on women's fears and insecurities in order to sell them life-saving products that could actually get them killed. You know, if these sellers actually gave a damn about your safety, they'd be selling you stuff that's useful and not stuff that is super cheap on Alibaba at a 400% markup. They're in it for themselves and it's really, really gross. So this really ticks me off. Quite frankly, anybody out there selling these things, you suck. Uh, stop doing it. Be a better human being because what you're doing is disgusting and quite frankly, you should knock it off. Um, for the women out there, largely, who are considering buying these things, please don't. There's all sorts of better options out there. If you're in an area where it's legal to carry, uh, the gold standard, of course, is a firearm for self-defense. That is why police carry them. It's because they are the gold standard. If you're not, then you got to look into what options are legal in your area, which might be pepper spray in some places, or it might be something else. But none of the stuff on these is a good idea. Uh, plenty of these, uh, plenty of these sellers are willing to sell you stuff that is illegal and may end up putting you in jail. And as an important self-defense thing, you don't want to go to jail. That is not a great place in terms of a safe environment. So, yeah, I I cannot condemn these people. In <laughs> I can't find the words to condemn them harshly enough. So. 
yeah, I guess I'll cut it off there and just say thank you for watching. That's my rant. And uh, if you like this, please like this video, share it to uh, share it to more people because I really think more people should see this one and subscribe to see more content. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Jonathan Wheeler, Canada's National Firearms Association, Mike, Kyle Martin, the CCFR, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Sights and Arms Limited, Mark Olivier Demour. And at the $20 level, uh, Jane Baben Luxor, Mark Whittington, Matt Ward, Peter Hilger, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, Bruno R., and Drew Elsich, and Aaron Del Salt. Thank you as well to all of my $10 supporters who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you guys for watching. Don't buy crappy self-defense solutions. I care about you. I want you to be safe. I want you to be happy. Which means that if you, you know, if you're in a situation where you got to defend yourself, I really don't want you to be sitting there going, oh, hey, I guess this pepper spray doesn't work. Should have bought something better. That is not where I want you to be. So thank you once again. And I hope this has armed you with knowledge because those self-defense keychains aren't, yeah, they're just not going to do it. Cheers.